yeah, I could sample what's up. <laughs> I got some set questions I was supposed to ask, but I'm gonna start off by asking Evil D, how important has DJ Premier been to what you do? Well, basically, when we was, um, it's funny because when we were shopping our stuff to different labels, it's like I would always see Premier. And Premier was like the only cat in the industry that would like at least tell us something that, you know, would help us out. Like a lot of cats, when you, you know, when you're trying to shop your demos and stuff, and you go to established cat, they always brush you off or go, ah, just talk to this one, talk to that one. Like when we seen Premier, Premier was like, yo, you know, go to Empire Management, talk to this guy, do this, do that. And it's like every time um, something happened to us in the industry where like we would uh, get into a predicament, Premier somehow got us out just by dropping knowledge on us. You know what I'm saying? So Premier, that's like, that's my brother right there. You know what I'm saying? He taught me a lot of stuff in this game. And without him, I'd probably still be home making demos and that's on the real. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Evil. Appreciate it. <laughs> I actually don't like Evil D personally, so. <laughs> nah, that's my dog right there. Well, thanks a lot, E. No doubt. Let me ask Shock, um, and we've heard it from that point of view. How influential has Premier in terms of what he does musically and how what he samples and his beat making? How what has it done for you in your career? Just musically, like just studying his drum patterns and all that, you know, like it's, it's explain like, to the crowd what that means. Like studying his, his drum bounce, patterns, you know, like then you try to figure out like while I was learning how to make beats, I would listen to his records and just try to figure out how did he get the kick to sound like that? How did he get the snail? How does it all stick together? How come when I, you know, like back then I didn't know how to put a kick in the snare where it didn't sound choppy, you know? And like, yeah, and he has like a certain progression to his, like a bounce to it. And like every producer has to find their bounce. And it's like Premier has a bounce, Evil D has a bounce, you know, I found my bounce. And it's like, um, that's one of the things I used to listen to his music for. I always loved, the, you know, the, the hardness of the drums and the bounce and the, and the bass and everything. So Primo, who was who who influenced you? Was it Marley? Uh, I mean, yeah. B-wise, Marley Mall did it for me. Um, it, 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 he was he was so funky, like he said. Marley Marley had a certain bounce and a certain funk to the way the beats came out that it sounded like what hip hop is supposed to sound like. Um, you could be black, white, Mexican, you could be green, you could be yellow. It's all about a certain way that, that it makes you, you know, the head nod. And I'm all about the head nod. It, he brought a certain funk to it when it came to sampling that was so unorthodox and ahead of everybody's time, you know, to come out with Cool G Rap and Roxanne Shante and to put out, uh, you know, Big Daddy Kane and Biz Marquis and every record. It's like I didn't even have to look at it. The Marley Marl's name was on it. I knew it was going to be hot. That, you know. So that's what it's all about. I, it's about making a name where people just buy it on the strength of your name. And you got to uphold that by constantly giving the, you know, the crowd what they want if they're going to support you like that. Like that, like that. You know, I'll take whatever. I don't care. Mm. I'll take whatever and make it into what I want it to sound like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like everybody here knows, uh, what is it, uh, Little Child Running Wild, Curtis Mayfield? Yeah. This is my interpretation of that. You 
know what I'm saying? Is beat making composition? And if it is, do you need to understand musical theory to be good at beat making? I, I, I think you all the answer. I think yes and no. When I was a kid, my mother forced me to take piano lessons. I didn't want to do it. I was like, oh, that's for girls. That's for girls. And, you know, I did it for maybe like a year or two when I was probably like six or seven years old. Did the little recitals, wore the little ugly suit. And, uh, you know, when it, when it came to that, um, it's crazy because what I do now when I when I program into a into a beat machine, I gotta know notes, I gotta know counts, I gotta know you know if it's three quarters, one sixteenth, or turn the, turn the count off and fly it in the way where I see fit, you know when you're laying. So it is composition to me because I'm into the whole history of hip hop. So I know the whole elements where Evil and I in shock could start talking about oh I know what kick that is oh they, that's the kick from so and so that's the snare from so and so that's the hi hat from this record certain DJs and producers actually know each other's drum sounds or where they got stuff from because that's how deep we research and love the art. And what's the illest shit that you ever sampled? That you what's the illest beat of the thing that you found that was just like nobody would ever think I could have turned this into bingo? Excuse my language for y'all children and Christians. If I I have I have a beat that I have a beat that I did, but it's I never sold it yet. It's like I took um I took an old break beat and I chopped it up into like 27 keys on the keyboard. And you everyone who hears this beat will know where it came from, but they will have you know they'll just freak out how I flipped it. So that's that's a personal though. It's not like you know like it's not a record or anything. Did you need musical composition or musical theory in your head to do this? Yeah, I think so, you know, I think that's why I agree with what he said, because it's like, you don't have to write it down to compose it, you know, it's, it's in your head and it's, it's coming from, and that's, it's coming from your heart, you know, like you're doing a track and, and you're like, well, this needs to go here, I can't, I have to change this around, so you're composing it, you know, you definitely need, you may not need to go to school for it, it's, it like a regular music school, that's why this is good, because you don't really need to know how to, how to play a violin to make a hip hop beat. But you do need, you need to come from the heart. That's like the main thing. You know, you figure out how to work your equipment to in a way where when you make the tracks, it's making you feel them, you know? Make your head nod. Mm -hmm. One thing that's missing right now is soul. You know what exactly. I'm saying? It's like, right now, a lot of cats that make beats, they think they can sit up in front of you know, I'm not even gonna say sit in front of a keyboard because that, you know, because we all up here play. We all up here play keys too. Um, but cats they can sit in front of an MP, a keyboard, and and that's it. You know, you when you when you make these beats, you have to put soul into it. Even as a DJ, when you're at a party and you're doing a blend, it has to match. Because if it doesn't match, believe it or not, it's not good. It, like a person that likes music, it will hurt their ears. Exactly. You know, it's a lot of records out, and I'm not trying to be a hater or nothing, because you know when you talk like this, you get categorized as a hater. But it's a lot of records, because I do a lot of parties. It's a lot of records that I play at these parties, and I look at the record like, why is this hot? What's yes, going on here? Definitely. You know, um, one thing we we got to bring the soul back. Well, let me ask you this then. So if you are teaching in a DJ or a Scratch Academy. You're gonna give this kind of information without being called a hater, right? Exactly. 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 I think that's what is really what it really all boils down to. No doubt. In the end, I mean, it ain't about hating. It's like there's things that you like. Premier started up. There's certain things you gotta have to yeah. do this correctly. One it's thing almost I, like everything else in the world, right? One thing I will say is if you if you look at um, criminal minded or Eric B. and Rakim Payne and Full, those are classic records. Yes. We don't have classics nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. All we got is hit and misses. They hit for a couple of weeks, then they then they miss. They're you know not what I'm timeless. Saying? Yeah, yeah, They're not timeless. You you can go to those records to this day, and I swear, 20 years from now, they'll still sound just as hot. Exactly. You know? exactly. This, this is bananas, first of all, because I never, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna find, I never did this before. Basically, I have to explain how to like the process of making a beat.
You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody has different processes of making beats. Me as a DJ, I start off with two pieces of wax. I'll sit down and I, if it's like a break beat, I'll sit down and cut up the break beat and tape it. And then listen back to what I did and reduplicate one of the ways I chopped the beats down. I try to make stuff so that when you hear it, it's something that you want to cut up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's, it's hard to explain. I'm going to just start the SP and let y'all hear something. You know what I'm saying? Let's hope it comes out right. Wow, that was loud. Simple, you know what I'm saying? Simple. Could the sound man add a little bit more bass to it? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's simple. Basically, that's um, Cool in the Gang, Who's Gonna Take the Weight? with drums that I programmed and a bass line that I played. You know what I'm saying? It's mad simple. Like the whole boundaries of making beats is what's up here. It ain't the piece of equipment you got. It ain't thousands of crates of records. It's what's up here. What's up here? What's up here? I don't really love hip hop as an art form or a culture, but I hear something that just drives me crazy like it takes a nation to millions. Why would a record like that make somebody who's not necessarily locked into hip hop, why, why would it make somebody fall in love? Why does that record make everybody fall in love with it? What was happening with that record? Obviously, it had to be influential to y'all. That's because it did. Brand from Marcellus, back to him, who's a jazz saxophonist. He don't, he don't like hip-hop like we do. We, we, I did a project with him, and he used to always be like, I, I, you know, all they doing is saying shit and damn and fuck, and I'm like, no, you're not listening to how they rhyme. I said, if, you, if you're only catching the curse words, then you think that's all you're hearing, but listen to what they're saying. I, and he said, but Public Enemy, he's a nation of millions. He said, that's a, that, that, that's a composition. But the thing is, he loved the way that they put all these sounds together and, and developed the actual a construction background. The record. Yeah, but they developed a background that made Chuck D sound good. You know, if Chuck yelled on just any track, it, you'd probably be like, yo, what's this dude yelling like this for? Why, you know, why is he so angry? But but the tracks match. You got to also match the artist. I like to match my uh, my tracks to the artist. It may sound like a premiere track all the time, but it still is designed for the artist that's going to spit on it. Certain tracks I did for Biggie, the rest in peace, I wouldn't have done for Guru because his voice wouldn't have gone with that particular type of a track. So it, for one, that, that goes back to the ear. The ear has to appeal to what, what you're what you, you know, trying to aim at. And then from there, you, you, you can't have the beat here, the rhyme here. You got to have both of them together. And some people, most of the records today are just beat and rhyme. Boom, the record's done. I call them microwave records. You know what I'm saying? It's so easy. Records, a lot of records out now, I can do that so easy, but I, f I like it complicated. I like when it's stressing me out and I can't come up with nothing and I get frustrated and want to go home because I can't make it, I can't come up with what I hear pre here in my head. And that, that's the reason why we used to check around for sa sounds to get a, a certain type of, a, of an atmosphere to set the, 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 the tone for the song. You know, so I, I think it's all about the ear first. And then again, like you said, Nation of Millions, which uh, all of y'all should have that in your collection. If not, go buy it. Actually, the first two albums, Yo Bum Rush the Show and uh, yeah, they slept Nation that of one. Millions. Yeah. They slept Bum yeah. Rush. I ain't gonna front. I think they should have the other one also, Fear of a Black Planet. Fear of a Black Planet, too. That was L. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was I, L also. Oh, after, yeah. after that, I started to, to lose yeah, interest. Yeah, it was bananas after yeah, it got, it got, All right, we cut it right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talking pro Okay, if we're talking process, let me ask a question. Ed, do you need to hear an MC's vocal a cappella before you drop or make a beat for him? Or does it really matter that you know what his voice sounds like without your thing happening? I'll ask you first, because well, does me, that make sense as a question? What I usually do, if I'm working with a particular MC, I will research, I'll research him. You know, like for instance, the only one person that I can make beats up without even thinking about it, and that's Buckshot. 
with Buckshot, if Buckshot says I need a beat, I know what he's looking for, so I'll just, you know what I'm saying? But uh, most of the time, I'll go out, I'm out looking at my crates first, you know what I'm saying? If I don't if I don't have their records in my crates, then I will actually go buy the record and then listen to how they do their thing and make a beat, you know? So that's how I do So the phrasing is important? Yeah. No, but I'm really going, uh, I want you to talk about phrasing also in terms of, because I know Premier knows, because he's been messing with some jazz cats and everything in Guru, but phrasing in terms of, do some MCs sound like saxophone solos or piano solos? Because I think what you were saying before about the curse words and blase blase, it's almost as if sax solo. Right. And you start to hear the phrasing of an MC's vocal, and it kind of tells you just through the musicality of exactly. it versus what's being heard. Give me an example of someone you work with whose phrasing has really been able to like move you forward in okay. terms of your process, your creative process. First thing I like to say, what you say is phrasing, I call flow. Flow. Okay. So, yeah. like, depending on how the artist flows on the track or on other tracks, it's, it's just like the artists do the same thing the producers do in hip hop. Like, the producers have their own bounce. The artists, I just, I use that word a lot. It's like the artists have their own bounce too. So it's like, if you, if, if you know, like, an artist, there's even BPMs artists stay in too. Like, certain artists, they like, you know, like someone who like be like a 90, like Eve, you know, like she's around 90. You know, like when I do tracks for Eve, it's like, I try to stay oh, around like, 90. Do y'all know what he, when he says she's around 90, do y'all know what he means? Beats per minute, yeah. So like, um, not to say she doesn't do records, you know, that aren't like that, but it, it's kind of like what you're saying, like depending on how they flow, depending on, the, that'll, that'll go to the BPM, then, that, then you'll go to the bounce. Do you, do you want the hat to go straight through or do you want it like a ch you know, it depends on the, on the flow of the artist. artist, 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 artist. Anything can inspire you to make beats a DJ. Like this beat I'm about to play, my cat inspired me. All jokes aside, it sounds funny, but my cat inspired this beat right here. Simple shit. And that's me sampling, not not playing, you know what I'm saying? Sam, 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 Sam. If I was starting right now and I didn't know anybody or, or anybody that knew how to work an SP, I, I would start with something just small just to learn. Like I used to have a little Casio, one of the little mini keyboards people used to that just play is probably this big, probably cost maybe $90. And uh, actually, the one I had was like $79. And it had a quick little sample. It only lasted, the sample time was probably like maybe six seconds. But I learned from that. And then you assign the sound to a certain pads yeah. and then you make it make it play it back. And I was sitting there just going, dun, 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 and I thought I was ill. Just doing that. <laughs> it was no drums or anything. Just then and then and then. I was like, oh man, I wish people could hear this. Then from there, again, the fact that we DJ too, we have a better perspective than any other producers, I think, because we, 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 we again, we're the selector. We we catch things differently because DJs always catch certain parts of a record. I mean, Peter Piper has been cut from almost every DJ. You know, for those that don't know, Peter Piper by Run DMC. There's a certain part of the record where it says, there it is. There's, every DJ has a routine to that that specific part of the record. Same thing with Rock the Bells by LL Cool J. Everybody LL Cool J is hard and constantly starting it over. It's the same thing process with making a beat if you sample. We catch a certain thing and we apply it to, to and, and then we start putting everything together. I like this sound, now how can I make it sound funky? And you experiment. Sometimes I'll start making a beat, I'm bopping my head, I'm trying to force myself to love it. And then I'll go, ah, it's not good. And I'll just turn the machine off, erase it. And everybody will be like, oh, man, you just kept it. If I don't feel like it's going to turn out to be what I want it to be, I erase it. It's, it's like being in a laboratory. If a man's in there making a certain potion, 
you gotta leave him alone to create and, and he mixes certain things together until it sounds like it's right and if it doesn't what do they do they destroy it and they start all over again sometimes you're not gonna get it right away again it's taken me more than a week to do one record and then the day before, the week before that I did a, a hit record that I think is a hit with us with a, a, a new cat that's down with us and I did it in like five seconds literally just bugging out with him talking playing around boom and we got a song done so it, it just depends you're not gonna always get it every single time on the spot but you, but equipment wise start with something cheap if your budget is, is tight that just has a sampler you can go to Sam Ash you can even buy used equipment you can go to Rogue you know all these places in the city buy some used equipment just to start out and then once your money starts to get up realize this producers make good money alright uh, Guru told me this from day one he said man if you're just gonna be my DJ you're, only, you're not gonna get 50% of what we make I was like well, what do I gotta do he said you're gonna have to produce and I was like well, what does the producer do he said, they got to make the beats. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to learn then. I didn't know how to really make beats really good when the first Gangstar album came out, when Manifest and all that came out. My engineer my engineer actually helped me tap out a lot of the beats on there. When we did the second album, Step in the Arena, that's when I said, okay, I got it. I know what to do now. I'm going to do it by myself. And that's what that's I did. Money aspect of the game has definitely ruined uh, the culture in a big way, but you always have people real like ourselves that still love the pure form of it, and we still go by the old guidelines. Like if you have albums like Criminal Minded Beat by BDP or, or, or an old Slick Rick album, the first Slick Rick album, you know, Adventures of Slick Rick, or the first MC Shan album, stuff like that. If you even have those and don't even have any new albums, you don't even have to have a gangster album. If you have any of those tools, it, it to start out with and you study those you'll always know how to put it down for the the generation of today but it'll just sound fresher for you know because the equipment's changed back then we didn't have all these samplers and all that stuff you know we i didn't even have hip-hop when i grew up you know what i'm saying all i had was r&b and what my mom used to play in the crib and my moms don't even play any instruments or anything but she loved music and she play, she's she's she has a big variety of, of a library. She has like Minnie Ripperton. She'll have Al Green. She'll have Curtis Mayfield. But then she'll have jazz stuff like Freddie Hubbard or Hank Crawford, Grover Washington. So hearing all that around the house, and she's an artist, so she paints. So I used to hear so many different types of music. So when hip hop came out, I totally identified because they dressed like me. They had the sneakers on. They had the pants a little baggy. You know, hat to the back or sideways. I used to dress just like that, and I was all against the the quote unquote system because of the fact that the the world. The, you gotta make the world beautiful because we already see how ugly it is out here. But you gotta make it beautiful for yourself. So. Part of it starts with just you knowing who you are as a person. If you ain't content with yourself when you look in the mirror, again, you ain't gonna be content with how to make hip hop music, DJ or anything that, that comes with this uh, the package of the quote unquote making. I'm living and eating and feeding my, all my friends and family off of this music. That's why I don't take it for granted and I don't mess it up. You know, there's gotta be a certain limit to how far you go in making it and and it depends on how where, where do you want to be if you want to be a pop hip-hop person go ahead you know everybody's not cut out to do what we do and you know if you make it past us it's all good we're still going to bang out the, the raw underground because that that scene has to live in order for it to not ever die, 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 die.